um, Taiwan and in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia. And now he's back in um, his hometown of Edinburgh, um, where he's still working for the British Council and also um, still teaching IELTS and assessing IELTS. So, okay, Jamie, um, over to you. Uh, let's start. Okay, thank you, Terence. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so my name is Jamie, and I'm an English teacher and IELTS trainer based in Edinburgh in, in the UK. Now, the focus of today's session um, is going to be looking at how to write a really good introduction to the writing task two of the IELTS test. And before we start, I think it's good to think about why the introduction to the writing uh, task is so important. You know, it's only 35 to 50 words long out of a possible 250, but it's a really important part of your task two essay. And that is because it's the first thing that the examiner reads. So it's really important for you to make a good impression on the examiner and show them uh, you know, what you're capable of. The second reason it's important is it shows the examiner whether or not you fully understood the question. It shows them that you're writing about the, the correct topic and that you're addressing, that you're going to address all parts of the question. And finally, the introduction acts as a map for the reader and it will signpost the reader and tell them what your main arguments are and what you're going to talk about during the essay without going into too much detail. So with that in mind, uh, the aims of the session today, <clears throat> by the end of the webinar, you will be able to identify five common task two question types. You'll also be able to analyze the question and identify the main points of your essay. We're gonna look at paraphrasing the question and through using four different techniques. Uh, paraphrasing is a really important skill for the IELTS test, both for speaking and for writing, and it can be useful for task one and task two. And don't worry if you're not sure what paraphrasing is, we're, we're gonna look at that in more detail. We're also going can, uh, James, can, you, can you turn up the volume slightly we, uh, just to make sure you're a bit louder, maybe speak slightly louder. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I can do that, Terence. Um, <clears throat> how's, how's that? Is that a bit clearer? That's better. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. So we're going to look at choosing a thesis statement or an outline statement, depending on the question type. So uh, again, don't worry if you're not sure what these mean, we're, we're going to look at them in more detail. Finally, we're going to practice writing a clear thesis statement or an outline statement. Okay, so that's the end of the, the session. Let's go straight in to analyzing the question. So there are five common question types for writing task two. And I'd like you to, to take a guess, what type of questions do you know? Um, so if you can post in the chat, um, you can let me and Terence know, what are some common question types for the writing task two? Okay, so Shankar has put here, agree or disagree. Very good. That is our first uh, question type. Yep. Excellent, I can see advantage, disadvantage. Uh, I think I saw problem solution there from Nur Sultan, thank you. Uh, Mushtaq, advantage, disadvantage. We've got a discussion. Excellent, you've got most of them there. And Mirali, opinion-based personal point of view. Very good, yeah, that would be our first type there, your personal okay. opinion, agree and disagree. So let's have a look. We have advantage and disadvantage. Um, we have problem and solution. We have discuss both views as well, uh, which was mentioned. And there's a final type as well, 
which is a direct question. So what is the difference between these five different types of question? Well, the opinion on the one is fairly clear. You're given a statement and you have to say, give your opinion on it, whether you agree or disagree with the, the statement. The second one, you're given um, an idea or an issue and you have to discuss the advantages and disadvantages. The third one, you're given a problem and you have to talk about the, the problem and describe its causes of the problem and solutions to the problem. In the fourth one, discussing both views, you are presented with two different opinions and you have to discuss them and, and say, perhaps this, say which one you agree with. And finally, a direct question. You're simply asked the question. So it might be something like, are students tested too much uh, in today's education system? And you have to say what you think about that. So we're going to look at these different uh, question types now. I'm going to give you an example of them. And I want you to tell me which question type it is. So here's our first question. In many large cities, some people waste hours of their time every day because of traffic congestion on the roads. What do you think are the causes of this? What solutions can you suggest? Which type of question is this? Lots of people coming through quickly there. Yeah. We've got some threes, some fours. Yeah. Mainly it threes. Is. Mainly threes, that's good. It is a problem and a solution, exactly. So for traffic congestion, what are the causes and what are the solutions? You would spend, you would have two body paragraphs, one talking about the causes, one talking about the solutions to the problem. Right, here's our second example. Many people believe that social networking sites have had a huge negative impact on both individuals and society. To what extent do you, dis do, do you agree? I am seeing <laughs> a very, a lot of ones coming in and you are all absolutely correct. It's an, an opinion, I say an agree or a disagree. We're gonna look at this one in a bit more detail in a moment. Now, Here's our third type. Success is often measured by wealth and material belongings. Do you think wealth is the best measure of success? What makes a successful person? And again, direct question type number five. Thank you, everyone. That's, that's correct. It's a direct question. So, this is quite a broad type, but it will, it's simply a question that you have to answer. And there, there could be different forms of question. So in this case, do you think wealth is the best measure of success? Okay. Final type. In many countries, schools are becoming increasingly reliant on computers and other learning technology to deliver lessons discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this and give your opinion. Yeah, clearly advantage and disadvantage. All right, excellent. And we do have, uh, do we have one more? Yep. Some people believe that the activities of multinational corporations mostly benefit the economies of developing countries. Other people take the opposite view and feel that these large multinationals are generally harmful. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Exactly. So this is a discuss both views type question. Okay, so we've looked at the different question types. Right. Uh, 
that will give you an overview. This is the first thing you need to do when you look at your question is work out what type of question it is because that will uh, define or determine the structure of your essay and also how you structure your introduction, which is what we're going to look at now. However, each type of question, well, uh, before we move on to that, the next step is to analyze the question a bit more carefully. And the easiest way to do that is to start by underlining the key words. So if we can take a look at the agree, disagree question and think about which key words would you underline when you read the question. Many people believe that social networking sites have had a huge negative impact on both individuals and society. To what extent do you agree? Which key words will you underline there? So Santoshi uh, Kumari says social networking. Yeah. Patricia, sa Patricia says believe. Yeah. Individual and society, Mohammed. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the, these are the words that I've underlined here. Social networking sites, huge negative impact, both individuals and society. Now, we know it's, we need to talk about social networking sites and have they had a negative impact? Are they bad for, for what? For both individuals and society. Now, this is why it's important to, to underline the key words, to read the question very carefully, because you might talk about social networking and you might talk about the negative impact, but the question is asking you to talk about both individuals and society. So if you just talk about the negative impact for individuals, you might lose marks because the examiner thinks you haven't answered, fully answered the question, and you might lose some marks for past achievement. So for, for here, it's important that you discuss the impact of social networking sites on both individuals and society. And many questions will have, you know, not just one subject or object, but, but two things that you need to discuss. And it's important that you cover both of them. Um, in Dorothy, I can see a question from you about paraphrasing. And that's fantastic because that is, we are going to talk about that in a moment. We have a couple more uh, steps to, to look at uh, before we start writing our introduction. But thank you for your question. So, we have looked at the keywords. The next step is to decide on our overall response. Okay, before we even start writing, we need to make a plan. We need to decide what our overall answer is going to look like. Now, for the agree, disagree type question, I would say there are three ways you could answer this. You could say, yes, I agree. The social networks have had a negative impact because, or you could say, no, I disagree that social networks are bad. Or you could say, well, I both agree and I disagree and give reasons for both. Now, my suggestion, and a lot of other trainers and teachers will recommend this, is regardless of your opinion on the topic, um, I would choose either to say you totally agree or totally disagree, because it's easier to write, okay? I mean, there are, it's, a, it's a complex topic, 
And you know, if you ask me my honest opinion, I think it's mixed. I think social networks can be good uh, for many reasons, but they also have many drawbacks. But if you ask me to write an IELTS essay on this topic, I would simplify my response. And I would say, okay, I'm only going to talk about the negative impacts, or I'm only going to talk about the positive impacts unless you feel very confident in your ability to present both sides, it can get a little bit complicated. So for now, I suggest you choose um, a stance. Does it choose a response. Do you totally agree or totally disagree? And once you've decided, you can start to think about your main points the points that are going to support your position. So I would like you just to give me some suggestions for reasons to agree with this statement, reasons why social networking sites have had a negative impact on society and individuals. If you can post some ideas in, in the chat, we'll hear your views. So we've got fake news there, addiction, online bullying, yeah. definitely a good one. Very good. Yeah. Lack of focus from Diana there. Amit says waste of time, so time wasting. Okay. Excellent. Fahana says um, a crime. Mm. Good. Make people less sociable as well. I, I saw that one. Uh, um... Rishab is online stalking. Okay, yeah, these are all excellent ideas, definitely. These are all real uh, negative impacts of, um, of Said social is networks. Being isolated. Now, good. Now, I would like, remember our question says individuals and society. So what I suggest is you choose two points. From all of these ideas, you would choose two, uh, two main points to focus on. One of them is focusing on the individual, and the second one focusing on society. Hmm. So let's have a look. I have some ideas here, which were mentioned. People spend too much time online and become isolated. For example, they don't see their friends or neighbors. So this is a, a negative effect on the individual. A second point, which was mentioned as well, people spread fake news. There's no fact checking on social media. Uh, so it can have a, a negative effect on society, okay? So these are my two main points that I'm gonna focus on in my essay you don't need to include too many more. Um, once I give, once I explain each point and give an example for each of these points, this will be a fully developed body paragraph and a fully developed argument. So you don't need to have too many main ideas, just two, maximum three, if you want to write three body paragraphs. Okay, what about reasons to disagree? with this statement? Why, how can social networking sites make a positive impact on society? Let's, let's hear your ideas. So Mohammed says building networks. Yep. Quite a few people say networking here. Somebody said online classes such as this one. Okay, yeah, definite, uh, definite positive there. Right? And Andrea says, uh, oh, I missed that one too fast. <laughs> Individual can connect globally from St. Keitha. Fam okay. says get huge amounts of information. Very good. VJ says business development. Excellent. That's uh, kind of you, Ash Ashfaq. Thank you. Great. Great. So yes, you've got some excellent ideas there. From all of those ideas, I've, I've chosen two, um, which you've mentioned. 
that social media can bring people together, for example, in different countries or people who live in remote areas, maybe for older people who are socially isolated, it can help them uh, to stay in touch with people they care about. Uh, for society as a whole, I've said people can use social media to promote social change, you know, to put pressure on governments or companies through Facebook and Twitter campaigns, for example. So it can have negative effects, but it can also be used for, for positive reasons as well. So again, I've just chosen two main points uh, if I want to disagree two main points for agreeing. You make this plan, just a quick note, before you start writing anything, before you start writing your introduction, you'll have an idea of your main points that will be in your body paragraph. And this will help you when it comes to write your introduction, which we're now going to start writing. So the first step of writing your introduction is in Dirty, um, you mentioned paraphrasing. How can we paraphrase? So, first of all, what is paraphrasing? How can we define paraphrasing? Very good. Mark Tan, uh, you have said rewriting the sentence um, in your own words. Uh, and that is exactly uh, the meaning of paraphrasing. It is rewriting um, a sentence to express it in a different way. Um, so creating a new sentence which has the same meaning as the previous sentence. And what any, any introduction for writing task one or task two, your first sentence should be a paraphrase of the question. Uh, that is to, to paraphrase the question to introduce the topic. And we're gonna look at how you can do that now. There are four common ways paraphrasing. Can you, can you name any of them, any of the four different ways to, to paraphrase a sentence? While people are thinking of them, um, somebody has a question, is it mandatory to paraphrase the question? I believe that was in Dorothy as well. Yes. Thank you, Dorothy. That was, uh, yeah, asking the important questions here. It, uh, I would say it, you know, in an IELTS, nothing is mandatory, but there are recommended ways of doing things. And paraphrasing the question is a, a clear way to introduce the topic. And it's a standard way of doing things. And I, I would strongly recommend that you start your introduction by paraphrasing the question. And we're gonna look at some specific examples of that in a moment. Now, I'm seeing a lot of good responses here. Using synonyms is uh, one, which I, exactly I have here. Synonym, what is a synonym? It's a different word with the same meaning. So for example, can you give me a synonym of the word big, anyone? What is a synonym of big? Uh, huge, large, massive, yep, exactly. The same meaning, but a different word, enormous, fantastic. Okay, this is a synonym, a different word with the same meaning. Now, other ways, which you guys have mentioned with paraphrasing, changing the word order, using the same words, but putting one of them first, one of them second. And you can achieve this by using a relative clause. We'll look at this in, in a moment. A third way is to change the form of the word. 
So if you have a noun, you could change it to a verb. If you have an adjective, you could change it to an adverb. And finally, and I saw someone had mentioned this, uh, which is very good. This is changing from an active to a passive voice. So from an active sentence to a passive sentence. So these are four common ways of paraphrasing. And we're gonna look um, at some specific examples of this now. So, so we have our question here. Many people believe that social networking sites have had a huge negative impact on both individuals and societies. Can we think of some synonyms that we could include uh, that we could use? Numerous instead of many, very good. Social media, good. So numerous people hold that social media uh, oh, has had an uh, adverse effect on persons, good, so maybe people and communities. All right, excellent. This is uh, crowdsourced uh, paraphrasing from, from you guys. Well, well done, uh, exactly. So I have a slightly different example um, with the paraphrased words in red here. Many people argue that social media has had a massive detrimental effect on individuals and their communities. So this is just a slightly different uh, use of synonym. We also have this idea of changing the word order. How can we change the, the word order? This one is slightly trickier um, than synonym, but you can use here a relative clause. So instead of saying, for example, social networking sites, We could say sites Okay, very good. Social media these days. Yep, yeah, you could put social media at the beginning. That's one uh, one possibility. Very good. Yeah, you, you're all finding uh, different ways of doing this, which I hadn't even uh, thought about it, to be honest, so that's, that's excellent. I'll show you uh, the example I have. Many people believe that sites used for social networking, and this is an example of a reduced relative clause. So you can say sites which are used for social networking. And you can also see that I've swapped society and individuals. I've just swapped their place. So again, this is a type of paraphrasing. And now, the third technique for paraphrasing is changing the word form. How can we do this? Um, which words could you change uh, to maybe say instead of negative, and impact?
good effect or consequences adverse very good now these are all nouns negative impact ah excellent abdullah uh abdullah Fa 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 fazi i i saw they're impacted negatively excellent so many people believe that social networks have negatively impacted both individuals and society. So here, instead of saying social networking sites, we've changed networking to networks. Uh, we've changed the, the adjective to the, the noun. And instead of saying a huge negative impact, we've said negatively impacted. Yeah. Same words, but a different word form. Okay, finally, and this is a really useful technique for academic writing, because being able to use the, the passive voice will make your writing sound more formal and more uh, more professional. Uh, this is using uh, the, the passive voice. So how could we make this sentence passive? Very good, fam trying social networking is believed. Yeah, exactly. I would focus on this verb. Many people believe. Excellent. Excellent. I'm seeing some very good responses here. Social networks are believed to have uh, you can see social network, social media is considered detrimental. These are, are very good passive forms that will that uh, make your writing sound more academic and more formal. Let's have a look. This is one example, one possible uh, way of forming the sentence. It is commonly believed that both individuals and their communities have been negatively affected by social media. Okay, so here it's a fully passive sentence. Okay. So guys, I hope that's been helpful for you. Four different uh, ways to paraphrase. We are going to come back to this in a moment and practice uh, with a different example. But let's move on to the next step in writing a good introduction. Once you paraphrase the question, and this is your first sentence, you need then to write a second sentence. In an agree-disagree uh, essay, this second sentence will be your thesis statement. So what is a thesis statement? MA is saying the main idea of your, your essay. Uh, that's, that's correct. Your opinion as well. Good. Why do I agree or disagree? You guys have got some good ideas. Uh, the thesis statement makes your position on the topic very clear for the reader, usually in one sentence. Okay. Um, now, you can introduce your thesis statement by saying, this essay will argue that. Or to disagree, you can say, however, this essay will argue that. So this makes it very, very clear to the examiner exactly what 
you're going to, your opinion will be, and what your main argument will be in, in this essay. So let's have a look at an example of that. So we've got our question. Many people believe that social networking sites have had a huge negative impact on individuals and society. We're going to agree with this statement. We've got our points here. It is commonly believed that social media has negatively affected both individuals and their communities. We've paraphrased the question. This essay will argue that. Yeah. And I'll give you so I'm seeing some questions. Is it essential to mention this essay? It's not essential, but this is one way to present your, uh, your argument, okay? You could say, I will argue that. But if you use the personal pronoun I, it's less formal. So to make it more academic, you can say this essay will argue that. Now I'm seeing from Vinesh, this essay will strongly agree that. This is actually not quite correct. If you say this essay will strongly agree that, it, it does not sound quite, quite right, okay? A better way to, to say the same thing is to say this essay will argue that. And this means I am going to give you my opinion. This is going to be my opinion. Okay, so instead of saying this essay will agree or disagree, it's better not to use uh, these verbs. I would stick with argue this essay will, will argue that. Yeah. And what are we going to argue? We're arguing that social networks have had a negative effect. Why? Because people spend too much time online and because people spread fake news. So we need to summarize your, your position and your two main arguments. So, here is my example. This essay will argue that social networks are detrimental to society overall because people spend too much time online and may also sp spread inaccurate news. So, this is my position. Social networks are detrimental to society. This is my view. And I also give you, introduce my two main arguments as well. People spend too much time online and people may spread inaccurate news. So, um, uh, Nuri, you questioned, do you have to state both points in one sentence? You, you don't. You could split it into two sentences, but you don't want to make your introduction too long. So the, the shorter and more concise you can be, uh, the better. You don't want to give too much uh, detail uh, in, your, uh, in your introduction. You're just um, introducing your position and your main, main arguments, okay? Um, Felicita, uh, Felicita, you are saying this essay will consider both views. That's a different essay type, uh, not an agree or dis disagree type. That would be discuss both views. Okay, so we've looked at the agree thesis statement. Let's look at what you could write if you were disagreeing with this. So, 
we've said it's commonly believed that social media has negatively affected both individuals and their communities. However, because you're disagreeing with this statement, however, but this essay will argue that. And what is your position here? Your position is that social networks have actually had a positive effect, right? That's what you're arguing. You're disagreeing with the statement. You're saying social networks have had a positive effect. So you can say, however, this essay will argue that social networks have had a positive impact overall because they bring people together and can be used to promote positive social change. Right? Again, summarizing my main arguments that I'm going to develop over my, my essay. Okay. So, this is a, a simple structure for an agree-disagree uh, essay type. You paraphrase the, the question, you introduce your position, saying that it, whether they've had a positive impact or a negative impact, and then you give your main ideas, summary of your main ideas. Okay. Good. Um, so, for Good. Now, in Dorothy, I'm looking at your thesis statement there. I strongly agree that social media has its positives because it not only connects people, but also contributes a lot to the development of society. That is a, a good thesis statement. That's a very good thesis statement. The one suggestion I would make is instead of saying, I strongly agree, I would say this essay will argue. This essay will argue that social media has its positives. Um, it's just a little bit more formal. It's the same meaning, but uh, more formal. Good. So let's move on to look at a different uh, essay type. Because for a opinion, agree or disagree, you will paraphrase the question and then you need to write a thesis statement. This essay will argue that. Okay? This is for uh, agree or disagree. For a different type of essay, for problem and solution, or disadvantage advantage, you will start by paraphrasing the question. But for this type of essay, you're not giving your opinion at the beginning. You're not stating your opinion. You're discussing two things. You're discussing causes and solutions, or you're discussing advantage and disadvantage. And at the end, then you might give an opinion, but you don't need to give your opinion at the beginning. So you don't need to write a thesis statement. What you need instead, after paraphrasing, is an, something called an outline statement. And this is simply telling the reader what you're going to write about. Instead of saying, I agree or I disagree, uh, I will argue, you're just saying, something like this essay will consider this essay will discuss so this essay will discuss the causes of traffic congestion and possible solutions or 
you know, this essay will consider the advantages of banning smoking and the disadvantages. So it's a slightly different type of statement. Let's have a look at how that can work in practice. So here we have a question. Our first step is to analyze the question. Decide what type of question it is. In many large cities, some people waste hours of their time every day because of traffic congestion on the roads. What are the causes of this? What solutions can you suggest? What type of question is it? Cause and solution, number three. Exactly, it's a, a problem and solution essay, fantastic. So we know what type it is. The next step, we need to underline the key words. What are the key words in this question? Traffic congestion, waste hours, large cities, excellent. Yeah, exactly. Large cities waste time every day, traffic congestion. Okay, so we need to think about our main points here. Um, what are the causes of traffic congestion and what are some solutions? Capitalism. <laughs> I, I'd agree with that. More cars, too many cars, no carpooling, overpopulation, lack of transport systems, yeah, not following the rules. Fantastic. Pro road network. Very good, guys. I have three possible causes here. There are more people living in the city, there's a lack of investment, and people have similar work and school hours. Okay, and so this all contributes towards traffic congestion. What about the solutions to this problem? What are some solutions for traffic congestion? More public transport, carpooling, Regulating the cars, yep. Rationing the fuel. Uh, yep, improving railway system, shifted work hours, very good. These are all good ideas. I have three of them here. We could invest more in rural communities uh, to make them attractive places to live. There'd be less people living in the city. We could build new mass transit systems to make public transport more convenient. We could also encourage, or rather the government could encourage employers to vary their working hours so that rush hour traffic would be reduced. Okay. So again, when you're planning, think about two or three points for causes and solutions, because you're going to talk about both in this type of essay. Now, our next step is to paraphrase the question. So, can, would you like to give it a go? See if you can paraphrase the question into one sentence. This is a, a, a more difficult one than the last one, I think. It is a bit, yep. We've got in, in metropolitan cities, very good. In metropolitan cities, lots of time is being wasted. Yep, uh, good. Because heavy traffic 
because uh, heavy traffic causes individuals uh, to spend uh, yeah spend a lot of time in their cars. Okay, very good. Yeah, many of you have got some very good uh, examples here. So that's excellent. Uh, I have prepared one, a uh, possible one for you. In urban areas around the world, a huge amount of time is wasted on a daily basis due to traffic jams. Okay, so many of you have something similar to this. So this is our uh, paraphrase, introducing the topic. We now need to write an outline statement. Ah, with, I should mention, with this type of question, after you paraphrase the, uh, the question, it's good to give a reason. Why is it a serious problem? Why is traffic congestion a serious problem? What, uh, what is the effect? And your personal life is affected, it affects health, it affects the environment, exactly. Briefly say why it is a problem. And I've said this is a serious problem because it affects both the economy and people's well-being. Okay, so for problem and solution questions, first you paraphrase the question, short statement, why is the problem a problem? then you'll give your thesis, your, sorry, your outline statement. So you can introduce your outline statement like this. This essay will consider. And you can say, this essay will consider the causes of traffic congestion in our cities before exploring possible solutions to this problem, such as, and my first solution was investment in public transport and rural communities. So uh, th this presentation will be available online, Amit, uh, after the, the webinar. Correct. So don't it, it worry. Will be on, it, it will be on the um, IELTS online test Facebook afterwards. Okay, excellent. So this, this is an example of an outline statement telling the reader exactly what you're going to write about. First, I will consider the causes of traffic congestion. Then I will consider or explore possible solutions to this problem. Uh, Akinwali, you said this essay will review. Can I say this essay will review? I wouldn't use the verb review. I would use verbs, this essay will consider, this essay will uh, explore, or this essay will discuss. These are um, more appropriate than review. Uh, Chisholm, you said, can we just mention the solutions in the introduction? Uh, I wouldn't go into too much detail. I would just briefly mention the problem and briefly mention the, the solution. Uh, this essay will present the causes. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I, I think discuss and consider would be better. Okay. So this is a very clear introduction for the um, for the problem and solution and also for advantage disadvantage. You can say this essay will consider the advantages and the disadvantages. Exactly the same structure, okay, as problem and solution. So we have looked at um, three of the possible five essay types. Now, 
We are, we are um, coming up to... Um, I'm not sure... How we're coming up to um, yeah. five to five now, so it's probably uh, maybe time to um, take some questions. If anybody sure. has some questions um, and we can carry on in a future um, webinar. We do have one question here from um, Sen Santoshi. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Sure. He says, in those four forms of paraphrasing, which one is recommendable or easiest? Sure, um, that is a very good question um, because you will, while it's good to show that you can paraphrase and that you can do so, that will gain you a lot of marks for lexical resource and also for grammar. It's also important that you can do so accurately. So I think Synonyms are, are always a good bet because if you, it's easy to know the, the meaning of the word if it's the same word. <clears throat> um, that is a fairly straightforward way to, to paraphrase. And if you can learn some common synonyms for very common items, you know, believe, uh, you can say argue, um, hold, uh, you can, those three will go, go a long way. Words like negative and positive, um, you can learn some key synonyms for those words. Um, effect, impact, uh, these are useful synonyms as well. I would say only paraphrase if you are confident in doing so, um, that you can do so accurately. And don't feel like you need to paraphrase everything. Um, you know, it's okay to leave some words the same. You don't need to change everything. I've seen some students tie themselves in knots because they attempt to paraphrase every time they, they don't want to repeat a word. <clears throat> but it's absolutely fine to repeat a word. It's just good to show a range of vocabulary as well. Okay. I think we can probably take one more question if you want to... Um... Pick a question there, Jamie. Mm, sure, yeah, I'll just uh, take, take a look. Uh, so, I have a couple of very quick questions I can answer. How many paragraphs are recommended for a higher band score? Uh, five or six paragraphs? No, you, four is fine. Four paragraphs, an introduction, a body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and a conclusion. Four paragraphs can easily get you a high band. Five paragraphs are fine, but not necessarily better. <clears throat> uh, recommended word counts for the first introductory paragraph, 50 words, uh, MA, uh, 35 to 50 words is fine. It doesn't need to be very long, short introduction, um, is will be fine. Um, sorry, Terence. I know that's two questions, but okay, I can yeah, do them that, quickly. <laughs> no problem. That's that's great. Okay, so um, we will in a in a future webinar we will save more time for questions in future. Sorry, we can't um, get everybody's question. And sorry when you were giving your sample answers that we couldn't read everybody's out. Obviously, we've had a lot of um, uh, students joining today. We've had students from all over the world, China, I saw Vietnam, India, South America, Middle East. Um, it's great to see that social networking has brought you all, all together. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and sorry if anybody had problems with the audio. Some people did mention. We'll try and resolve that for next time. So we will be having another webinar next week. So everybody, please do join us next week. And t please tell your friends about the webinar as well. Um, please also check out our website, IELTSOnlineTest.com. Um, we have lots of free practice tests on there and also a paid service to check out your writing IELTS score. Um, and finally, um, do let us know if you have any ideas for the webinar and what you'd like to see or ideas about what you'd like to see on our website, please um, email us um, hi at on ielsonlinetest.com or send us a message on Facebook. Okay, so I think you can all join me in saying thank you very much to uh, Teacher Jamie for a great session and we will be including the slides on our Facebook um, next week. Okay, so uh, thanks Jamie.
Thanks very much, Terrence. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure. And thanks, everyone, for joining. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.